Hello and welcome to my channel. If you've been here before, welcome back. My name is Alfonso Peluso and I'm a studio associate professor in the College of Architecture at IIT, the home of the legendary Mies van der Rohe, and I'm adjunct faculty at Columbia College Chicago in the Interior Architecture program. Shout out to all my students. I hope you're having a great day. It's a nice fall day here in Chicago. Pretty sunny out, so pretty excited about that. I hope the weather is great wherever you're at. <clears throat> All right, today we're gonna work in Revit. We're gonna look at the basics of Revit. So Revit basics, and at the end of the video, we'll have something like this, a little camera view with some shadows and some lighting. All right, before we jump into that, if you haven't subscribed to my YouTube channel, please search me up on YouTube and go ahead and click on the button that says subscribe. Click on the little bell for all the notifications. Getting close to 10,000 subscribers. Wow, that's going to be a great milestone. If you can help me get there, that would be fantastic. Also, connect with me on Instagram. See what I'm up to with my students. Recently, I had a midterm presentation. See what the students were able to produce. Did some really cool laser cutting at Columbia College. So check that out. Looking to get to 2,000 followers soon on Instagram. All right, so where are we going to start? We're actually going to start out in AutoCAD of all places. And the reason being is that a lot of times you'll start out with an AutoCAD drawing that you'll bring into Revit. So here we have an AutoCAD drawing, and I just want to talk a little bit about it. So one thing is the north arrow is pointing left, and we want to make sure that that north arrow is pointing upward. Also, there's going to be a reference point, which is going to be for 0, 0, 0, which is the outside corner of this column. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and select it. And I'm going to rotate it. And I'm just going to pick a point and rotate it 90 degrees. So now my north arrow is up. Now I'm going to move it so that that outside corner of the column is at 0, 0, 0. So I'm going to select all of this and move it. Move it from that outside corner to hashtag 0, 0, 0, 0. It's important that you have that hashtag in there. So hashtag zero comma zero comma zero. <clears throat> okay, now we just want to check, make sure that our plan is at x, y. So there it is, it's at the origin. So this is ready to be saved and brought into Revit. So this file is in the comments. There's a link to this file in the comments, so you can find this AutoCAD file in the, not in the comments, I should say the description. So there's a link to this file in the, in the video description if you're looking for that. All right, I'm going to go ahead and save as. I'm just going to call this one AutoCAD Drawing Rotated Moved. Okay, so we're gonna go ahead and bring that into Revit. So I'm gonna start a new Revit file. And it's important with this Revit file that it is a new file. So I'm clicking on new, and it's Imperial Architectural Template. Not construction, not structural, not systems, okay? It's important that this is an architectural template. Architectural is for buildings, Imperial means that it's in feet and inches. Okay, so we're making a new project. Okay, so we're going to talk about these little camera view icons. You can see I can select those with a window and I can move them around. You can go ahead and move them anywhere you'd like and we'll see we're going to have to move them. So these are our elevation views. You just don't want to delete those because then they'll delete the elevation views from over here from your project browser where it says east, north, south, and west. So that's what those are. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and bring that AutoCAD file in by using insert. 
and I'm going to choose import CAD and there's the drawing there now what I want to make sure that I do is for colors I want to make sure that I don't use preserve which is the default I want to use black and white okay so that's going to come into Revit it's going to be a lot easier on your eyes when the lines are black and white okay so now the drawing is coming and you see these little elevation markers I'm just making a window and I'm just moving those out the other ones over there there it is and this one is in here let's move it over here okay so those are out of the way now now did it come in to the origin how do I know where the origin is in Revit well what we can do is we can type in the shortcut VG VG is for visibility and graphics VG VG visibility and graphics and I can go down to site and I can expand site and I can click on project base point. So this is under site, under uh, under site, and it's called project base point. And I click on the check mark, click OK, and there's a little base point that shows up. So now we know we're working with the same origin from AutoCAD to Revit. All right. All right. So let's go ahead and model. Let's go ahead and model the first floor. So what we're looking at is we're looking at a floor plan that is surrounded by some elevations and a section. And then down here is a little mezzanine level plan, the second floor plan. Okay, so I'm gonna draw the first floor. So I'm gonna do this by going to the architecture tab and I'm gonna to go to the down arrow for floor and I'm gonna choose architectural. And from the draw panel here, I'm going to choose a rectangle. I'm going to zoom in here and go from this column all the way out to this column. Okay, so from column to column. I'm not drawing this outside cafe slab. Okay, and I'll click my check mark. So that draws my first floor. And if I look at this in a 3D view, so to go to a 3D view, there's a little house icon here. That'll bring me to the default 3D view. I can click on that. And there's my first floor. So that's been drawn in 3D. All right, so I'm gonna go back to level one. So level one is just my first floor plan. And I'm gonna go ahead and draw a column. And I'm making a column to match this column here, this is an eight inch by eight inch column. So I'm gonna to go to architecture, I'm gonna to go to down arrow for column and I'm gonna choose column architectural. Now when I place a column in by default and I hit escape a few times and I go ahead and I select it, I can see from the properties panel that it's a 24 inch by 24 inch column. There's other sizes here. There's 18 by 18. There's 18 by 24. So we're gonna make an eight inch by eight inch. So the way that we're gonna do this is we're gonna click on edit type. We're gonna click on duplicate. We're gonna name this eight inch by eight inch. Okay, that's not enough just to rename it. We have to change the depth. So I'm gonna change the depth to eight inches and I'm gonna change the width to eight inches. So the width and the depth are both set to eight inches and I'm gonna go ahead and click okay. And you see I have an eight inch column that shows up here. So I can go back to my 24 by 24 if I need to and I can go down to my eight inch by eight inch. I'm gonna go ahead and move this and the shortcut for move is MV. So the shortcuts in Revit, there's no enter key. You don't hit an enter key afterwards. You just type MV for move and I'm gonna go ahead and move this over Okay, now I'm going to use CO for copy, and I'm going to copy this. And there's another one, another column over here. Okay, I'm going to hit escape a few times. And I'm going to copy those three up vertically to the other locations of the column. You see there's a one, 
two, three, four rows of these. So I'm going to select those three columns using the control key. Okay, so now I have those three columns. I can type in CO for copy, and I'm going to copy it from the outside corner to the outside corner to the outside corner, and then there's one more to the outside corner. Okay, so now I have all of those columns, and I can just check this in 3D by going over to my 3D view. Okay, so now it's the height of those columns that we want to be mindful of. So the height of those columns should be 24 feet. If I go to an east elevation, so an east elevation is going to be looking this, this way because north is up, so east is here. So I'm going to be standing looking back at the building that way. If I go to east elevation, I can see these what are called levels. And I'm going to click on one and I'm going to drag it out. Kind of get get used to you saw I dragged it pretty easily. I, there was a little dot in there. So without zooming in, I can drag it out pretty easily. Okay, so I want to make a new level. So I'm going to select level two. I'm going to hold down shift and control. Shift and control are held down on the keyboard, and I'm going to drag it up. And I'm going to change this one's name to top of ext wall top of exterior wall. So a shortcut for top of exterior wall. I'm going to change the height of it to 24 feet. Okay, so not sure if I said the columns were 24 feet or 12 feet, but they're, they're going to be 24 feet. So I'm going to select one of the columns and then I'm going to right click and then I'm going to choose select all instances and entire project. And then over here in the properties panel, I'm going to change the top level. I'm going to change it at the top of exterior wall. Okay. And then we have that top of exterior wall at 24 feet. All right, perfect. And we have the columns are up to that 24 feet. Now I'm going to go ahead and draw these two walls here where my cursor is, where I'm highlighting it with my cursor, these east walls. So I'm going to do that in level one. I just want to show you a couple things with drawing walls. So if we go to wall and we choose architectural, I'm going to go ahead and set that to generic six inch because that's the width of this wall. Now, the other thing I'm going to do is I'm going to change the location line of that wall to finish face exterior. And what that does, if I draw a line, it's following my cursor, and my cursor is drawing the finish face exterior. So if I draw it up, if I draw it from bottom top, it's going to put that finish face exterior on the left. If I draw it from top down, it's going to put that finish face exterior on the right. So I want to draw this from top down so that the finished face exterior is on the right. So I'll go ahead and snap from column to column. Now one thing it does is it joins the wall to the column. And I don't want that, so we're going to unjoin it. So if I go to 3D, you see where these are joined. So it's joined the wall into the column as one piece. So I'm going to go ahead and go to modify under join I'm going to choose unjoin geometry and I'm going to click the wall and that should automatically unjoin it from both columns okay so you see that's been unjoined the second thing we need to deal with is the height for that wall so we want the height of that wall to be top of exterior wall so for its top constraint it's set to unconnected we're going to go ahead and change that to top of exterior wall and click apply. All right, we have this unjoined wall. So now I'm going to copy it to this other side. So I'm going to select that, 
type in CO for copy and copy that to the other column. Now it might rejoin to these columns. If so, we can always unjoin it. Yeah, so it is it is joined itself to those columns. So I can go ahead and unjoin that. Okay, so let's let's talk a little bit about how I'm navigating in this Revit window here. So if I hold down my wheel, it's panning. If I roll the wheel in and out on the mouse, it's zooming. If I hold down the wheel and I hold the shift key, it's a 3D orbit. Okay, so wheel in and out is zooming. Wheel held down is panning. Wheel held down and the shift key is a 3D orbit. Okay. All right, so there is a, a curtain wall in between. Let's look at level one. So here we have a, a curtain wall in between the two columns. So we're gonna go ahead and draw that. So I'm gonna go to architecture. I'm gonna go to the down arrow for wall and choose architectural. Instead of basic wall, I'm gonna go down and I'm gonna choose storefront. And let's go ahead and draw that. So let's look at, we, we know that the finished face exterior is going to draw, I should be drawing this from top down. But what happens if I don't? What happens if I draw it down up? So let's see, I'm just drawing it between the two columns. And you can see the glass is facing inward. I want the glass to face outward. So I can just select this wall and there's a little flip button, or I can press my space bar. And my space bar will flip that in and out. So I want the glass toward the outside. Okay, and I also want, to, want this to line up with the outside of the column. So I'm going to select it, type in MV, and move that in. Okay, let's look at that in 3D. Okay, so in 3D, I want this to match what I'm seeing here in the elevation. So the first thing is the elevation is going to line up with the top of the column. So I'm going to select that. So you have to be careful when you're selecting. I'm, I'm hovering over this and I'm making sure that all those dashed blue lines show up. And then I'm clicking and I'm clicking on the whole wall. And I'm going to change my unconnected top constraint up to top of exterior wall. Click apply. Okay, now it's the mullions that I need to change. So I need to have one, two, three, four mullions vertical and one mullion horizontal. Okay, so I can do this by going to edit type. And instead of the layout where it says maximum spacing, I'm going to change this to fixed number for both my horizontal and my vertical. Okay, so my vertical grid is set to fixed number and my horizontal grid is set to fixed number. I can click apply. Notice the types of mullions. It's using a rectangular mullion, two and a half by five. That can be changed in here. We won't get into that just yet. Okay, so now let's change now that we've changed it to fixed number, I can change the number of mullions here. So let's change the number to four by one. Okay, now it matches the drawing below. Okay, I wanna go ahead and mirror this to the other side. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make my life easier by making a group of this first. So I'm going to select this wall, and I'm using my control key, and I can select the curtain wall, and I can select the other wall. And I can type in GP is the shortcut, GP for group. And I'm going to call this West, West Elevation. And I'm 
going to go ahead and mirror it to the other side. So to mirror, I'm going to use a shortcut called DM. DM for draw mirror axes. It's also located up here in the uh, in the ribbon. So DM, draw mirror axis. So I'll type in DM. I'm going to snap to the midpoint of that column. And I'm just going to drag it all the way across. I'm not going to try to snap to the midpoint of this column. I'm just going to drag it all the way across. I could hold my shift key too, but then it doesn't give me the blue line. I'm going to drag that all the way across and making sure it says 90 degrees down at the lower part of my screen. Okay, so now it's drawn the other wall. And it has, it has joined itself. So this gives me an opportunity to look at opening a group to edit it. So I'm going to select this group. Uh, first thing I want to do is I'm going to rename it because it's still called West Elevation. It doesn't change yet. So I'm going to rename it and call this East Elevation. And I just did that by going to edit type and then rename. Okay, so to open the group, I can click on, with the group selected, I can click on edit group. And then for this wall, I can go to modify and I can go to unjoin geometry. And I'll do that for the other side too. And I'll click on finish. Okay, so we have those walls looking pretty good. Okay, so now there's a mezzanine level. Uh, it's a second floor. It's just where you see these dashed, these dashed lines here. I'm going to draw that just, just because I have some things in the way right now in 3D. I'm going to go ahead and draw that here in this view. Okay, so I'm going to go to Architecture, and I'm going to go to Floor, Architectural, and I'm going to choose Rectangle, and I'm going to Snap to these dashed lines, and I'm also going to draw so that I make a cutout for the elevator, and a cutout for the stair. So three rectangles. So once those three rectangles are drawn, I can click on the check mark. Okay, so I know, I know that this plan happens to be 200 feet away from the other plan. So I can type in MV for move, and I can just pick a point and type in 200 feet, enter. It's going to give me an error that the highlighted floors overlap, so that the, the mezzanine level and the first floor overlap. That's fine because we're going to change the height of this level. Uh, we're going to change it here to level 2. Okay, let's take a look at this in the east elevation. So right now, level 2 is at 10 feet. So I'm going to change level 2 so that it's at 12 feet. Okay, so now that floor is also at 12 feet, right in line with the outside column. All right. Okay, so let's go ahead and make the camera now. So I'm going to swing this around to the other side. And I'm going to go to View, and go to the down arrow for 3D View, and choose Camera. And I'm going to pick one point, and then two points. And it's going to immediately put me into the view of that camera. Okay, now I'm going to want to edit that and plan in a level one view. So I'm going to close my 3D view and my east view. So I have just opened my 3D view 1 and my level 1. 
Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the shortcut WT for window tile. And that's going to tile those two windows. Now you'll notice I don't see the camera in plan. But I do want to see it. I do want to see it in plan. So how do I see it in plan? Well, I go down to 3D views and I click on the plus. And then my 3D view 1 is my camera view. I can rename that. I can right click and choose rename. And I can call this camera 1. It also renames the view in the top left here. I can right click on it and I can choose show camera. And when I do that, it shows the camera in the floor plan. So I can move this camera and then it will update on the left. Okay, a couple things that I want to do with that camera. I want to make sure under 3D view that the far clip is not active. So where it says far clip, clip active, I'm going to uncheck that. And I'm going to click apply. Okay, so now the camera should the camera will not clip the far plane. It will it will see infinitely uh, outward to the outside. The other thing that I want to do in this particular drawing with the camera is I want to turn off the AutoCAD drawing. So to do that, I'm going to use my shortcut VG, which we looked at at the beginning of the tutorial. So VG. I'm going to go to Imported Categories, and I'm going to uncheck that AutoCAD drawing. Click Apply, OK. And then that turns off the AutoCAD drawing in this view. The other thing that I can do is I can use this crop window to make this a little bit wider and a little bit shorter so it crops to the mezzanine height. Okay, so how can we make this shaded and, and can we take a look at the lighting also? So I'm going to close level one so I can make this a little bit bigger. So I'm, I'm going to use a shortcut called GD for graphics and display. So GD, graphic display options. And so my model display style is hidden line. There's other styles here. You can do shaded. You have to click apply every time you click on these. You can do realistic. Just thinking about it. But we're going to keep this as a hidden line. OK, so we're thinking about making renderings for schematic designs, very schematic type renderings. OK, under shadows, I'm going to click on cast shadows. I'm going to click apply. And then I'm going to click on something called show ambient shadows, which is um, something you can experiment with if you want on and off. But what it does is it, it shows how objects cast shadows onto one another. I'll click apply and you get a little more, a little more depth. Okay, I'm going to skip sketchy lines, depth, queuing, and I'm going to go down to lighting. And the only thing, the only slider that's going to be affected in a hidden line is the shadow. So if I turn this all the way down, I have just barely any shadows. If I turn it all the way up, I have very heavy dark shadows. The other two sliders won't do anything in this particular view. You can see from 0 to 100 is the same. Same with the sun. Those are more for your rendered view. Okay, so I'm going to bring the shadows down. I don't want the shadows so heavy. I want them to be a little bit lighter because I'm on the interior. Okay, and you know, we, we understand that the whole building is not modeled yet. Okay, I can click OK. 
Now, to export this view out, I need to export this as an image. So I can go to my main menu file, and I can go to export, and I can go down, it's hidden. I go down to images and animation, and I can choose image. Okay, so I want it to be my current window. I also want the image size to fit to 3600 pixels horizontal. This is not default, so you have to type in 3600 pixels. And I'm not, I'm not looking for a transparent background at the moment, so I can change this to JPEG lossless, both of these, so it doesn't lose any resolution. It's not compressed. It's a JPEG that's not compressed, so I'm not losing any quality. Okay, next thing is just to tell it where I want to save it to and give it a name. Okay, we can open that up and see what it looks like in Photoshop. And there you have it, it looks pretty good. All right, well, that's all I wanted to cover in this video. I'm gonna have a part two and maybe a part three to this video. So keep a lookout for that. If you enjoyed this video, go ahead. My head's gonna pop up on the upper left and click on subscribe if you haven't subscribed. If you like it, give me a like down below. Tell me why you liked it. And I'm going to put a link to some other Revit videos in the upper right and the lower right. All right, I will see you on the next one.